Hi, this is Mike Hibbard back with another Python Django tutorial for you. Um, as promised in the last tutorial, we're going to cover a little bit on how to extend forms and to actually start creating forms of your own. Um, this is not going to be a full-blown forms tutorial, but it's going to give you the basic concepts of how forms work in Django uh, so that you can then um, ease yourself into the idea of how forms actually are a class within Python and not an HTML based um, layout that you put into your pages. Um, it's an interesting idea that you can create an, an object within Python that knows how to, to actually create itself on a web page. Um, so we're going to look at why you need to understand that and in the, in the process, we're going to also extend the registration form that we built last time in, uh, in our user registration tutorial. Um, as you remember, or you might remember, um, we were able to record the password and also the username, but there were some of the, inf some of the pieces of information missing. For instance, the email wasn't being recorded at the registration time. And you might find that also in other registration situations you might want to to record lots of other types of information that aren't included in the basic uh, user creation form that we used so how do we go about extending that well um, as with everything we we choose uh, where to keep our code and because this registration system is is a site-wide kind of um, module then we're going to keep our forms for the for this uh, specific subject um, inside of our Django um, folder so where we keep our project rather than actually where we're keeping our modules so if I just open up my um, tree view this gives us an idea of where all of that's kept so we're talking about in the Django test uh, project folder. If we were going to make forms, for instance, for our article uh, module, we'd stick them inside of the articles or the article folder. Um, we'd still probably call it the same fo file because when you do forms, you generally just call them forms.py. So whether this is in my project folder or whether it's in my article folder, I would make a forms.py here. And inside of there, we do all our declarations for the forms. So I've created the file there. So I'm going to open it up in our uh, wing ID. And we're going to add a few things in just to extend that. So just to remind you, we're currently using this user creation form, which is contained in Django Contrib Auth Forms, um, which is part of that authentication uh, module that we can import. We're going to extend this um, by basically inheriting that class and all its properties, but then adding an extra few bits and bobs for ourselves so we can start and save the email address. Um, and this can easily be applied to the first name and last name information that you might have seen in the admin in our last tutorial also. But I'm just going to concentrate on how to do the email address because first name, last name is very simple. It's just a text field. Um, so you should be able to add that by yourself once you've get into grips with what this tutorial does. So what do we do first? First of all, we're going to say from Django, bring in the forms um, framework. Then we're going to say from the authentication models, bring in the user because when we do our registration process, we're going to fill in some of the user information and then save it. So um, we're, we're going to override the way that this user creation form actually saves its information. So we need to get that user model so that we can start and create records and alter them. The next bit is to just bring in our user creation form so that we can actually inherit from it with our new class. And then I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to call it my registration form and in the brackets we're going to say this form inherits from 
the user creation form that was just pulled in from auth model uh, from contrib auth forms. Now the next bit we're going to start and declare uh, what fields will be displayed in the form in the HTML. So this is a different concept to, to what you might be used to in other other kinds of uh, web development situations where you would normally do uh, as we've done before we would you just write your own form um, you put your own fields in and you name them and you do it all in HTML we don't have to do that with Django forms and that's why it's so useful and so helpful because all of the the processes that you would normally go through like for instance doing the HTML to make the form um, then actually parsing the information out of the form and then making sure that it's clean and safe from any kind of weird Django uh, JavaScript in injection or anything like that this mod this class will do all of that for you so you basically just have to tell it what parts of the information you, you want to pull from the form and the way that we do that is we define a field so to define a field for our email that we're going to pull in we basically go here's a variable called email that equals one of these built-in types that is defined inside the forms module email field and we're going to say that it's required so you know you can't fill in this form without this saying you know if, it, if, it, if you don't put an email address in there it's going to come back and say that's not um, that's not a valid form you need to fill in this field the next thing we do is we add in this uh, embedded class um, I'm not sure what the exact term is for these but this is a class that's defined within the scope of this form class that we've created and it's simply to hold um, anything that isn't a form field so anything from um, what the model is, what the fields are, what ordering you might have um, in other in other models or other model forms that you create, you can put all sorts of different attributes that would apply to the form inside of this class. And this is basically the metadata for the for the actual class itself. Um, and this is a this is more or less the way that Django tells this class it's got extra information other than the obvious declaration of form fields. So you've, you've defined the form fields here, but then we've actually added an extra bit of information in just to say what the model is, and then obviously what fields we're gonna contain. So user, email, password one, and password two. Okay, so next we now have to um, do a little bit of messing about with the save method now just to to give you the explanation of why inside of our project that we created with virtual env we installed django and it installed into this lib folder here under python 2.7 for me in site packages Django and go back into that Django folder there this is when when you're typing Django from Django import such and such what it's really saying is from this Django folder here import one of these available models uh, modules rather so from contrib auth import forms so if we take a look at that in our editor um, I'll just quickly open it up and local Python site packages Django contrib auth forms if we use this nice little quick uh, class selector drop down box we can go to the user creation form which will shoot us straight away wherever it is in the file 
and you'll see there that it's it's quite a, a long bit of code but we're not going to totally duplicate all of this we're going to inherit most of this the, the thing that we're really interested in is the save method that it has so how this information gets saved by this form so what you've got here is first of all it uses a super command which is just to basically call to call the base class and use the save, the save um, method in this is instance so this will just basically go down and call the, the very basic um, Django form method it brings back as a, a user and then we then have set password blah 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 save it and return a user so this does very much all of the stuff like you know checking for the valid username and seeing that it's not duplicated and then setting the password based on what password one is after validation notice it used this this thing here called cleaned data this is a, a, a dictionary of information that's created from the information that's passed through from the HTML form now this information is what you would consider to be safe to be put into a database because it's been through filters it's been validated it's been checked for you know uh, all co all kinds of invalid characters and then it's been put in this cleaned data area so if you're going to pull anything out of the um, the posted form then it's better that you get it out of here than anywhere else and at least you can you can be more or less sure that it's safe so that's pretty much what the save method in the original one does so what we're going to do is we're going to more or less copy that a little but instead of just doing the set password and the the rest of it we're just going to add in the extra bit to say save the email address so we'll start off by just doing the same line as before uh, calling the super so calling the subclass which will be the user creation form calling it save method but telling it not to commit the data you remember in our databases um, tutorial for Django we looked at how you know you've got a you can create a, a user object or a, a, an article object fill its fields in with information but then to commit it you have to actually use the save method so we're telling it not to save it right now because we haven't quite finished adding information to the user object now we add in our email to the user object and we use it we take it from the clean data area so that we know that it's been processed and that it's going to be safe for us to put in the database and not screw everything up and then we're saying if this commit value equals true which it would be in our case but it wouldn't be in this case because we've sent it through to the other form and the reason why we do that is because if we then decide at a later date to then inherit from my registration form we've got this um, with the basic setting of save straight away and if we ever want to override it we'll just say false So it just follows the convention that we, we, we automatically save unless we want to specify not to. So we save in and then we return the user object in the same way as the old form does. Um, because I'm sure that probably gets passed on to something else to get, you, to get uh, manipulated or recorded by another part of the framework. So we will not uh, break with convention and that will keep that user there so that's that so that's basically how we've overridden the functionality of the user creation form the only thing we've really got next to do is to to switch over and stop using the old user creation form in our view so to do that we're going to go from forms which is our forms file 
import my registration form instead. Okay. And then if we go down to our register, register user view, we're going to switch over from using the user creation form. So we're going to make one there, which goes into the empty, unposted form. And then we're going to create another one here, which goes into <coughs> our posted form with the post information passed through to it. And then, obviously, the form validation is exactly the same because we've just basically inherited everything from the original base class. So all we need to do is say, if it's a valid form, save it. And then redirect to our registration success, which is exactly what we did in the last tutorial. But now we're going to do it with our new customized form, which should allow us to save the email address. We could also, if we wanted to and if we had time, we could then, if we wanted to, add in more fields for the first name and surname or second name. Um, but if you want to go ahead and do that as an exercise, feel free. It shouldn't take you two seconds. In fact, you can more or less just stick them in underneath here, saying user dot first name, etc. equals cleaned data. And and as long as you added in the extra form field up here, then it should all work. So let's give it a try, just to see it in action. Okay. Then here we go. There. So, not very pr well formatted, obviously, because I haven't really applied any CSS or anything like that to the page. But, here we go. Um, test user and I think it's me at website.com I'm just going to put in that there you have successfully registered okay so if we go into our admin let's just see whether that's recorded our email address in addition to the password and username And here we can see that it has. So, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. The form itself doesn't ne necessarily have to be changed in your templates. It just needs to be changed at the code level, which means that any code updates would automatically update any HTML forms that you have on your website. This makes it way more maintainable than if you had to go and change the code and then you had to go and change your HTML. So it, it saves a lot of worry for you in that. So that's basically it. That's how you do that sort of thing. I'm hoping that this was informative to you and it helped you out. Um, if it did, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more in the series and uh, next time it will be how to make your own custom forms for your own custom models and we'll take that a step further then if you want to know more about that or any of the other subjects that we'll cover in the future then please click the subscribe button thanks for watching